I'm doing it right now. So 
minus 94. So um, Pfizer have said that they could possibly have up to 40 million doses by the end of the year. They have um, created like mega um, transport trucks with super deep freezes in them. Um, and so there could be um, 20 million people or so by the end of the year that could have the initial vaccine and then a follow-up. Okay, but who are those people going to be, right? Because it's not going to be us, <laughs> okay? And that's what we have to bear in mind. It's all very well for them talking about vaccines and things, but that's not going to change my position or your position anytime soon, right? Because the people that need these vaccines are first responders, hospital workers, people working on checkouts at supermarkets, right? The people that are doing the jobs that are keeping us going during this are going to be first in line. And then it'll be the elderly, right? People with diabetes, people with asthma. So there's going to there's be a whole line of people in front of us as healthy adults, okay? So it's likely to be, I don't know, Spring, I think, would be my guess. I'm hoping it's spring because I would really like to fly home and see my daddy. Right? So, we'll see. It's very nice talking to him on FaceTime, but it doesn't replace the real hug. Right? So it's possible that the current vaccine that they're working on could be authorized, as we said, by the end of the year, assuming there aren't any hiccups between now and the end of the year, right? If someone in one of their trials gets really, really ill or dies, then this whole vaccine will get put on hold for a while until they investigate what happens. So, you know, it's possible but not definite, right? Um, apparently, there are about 10 other vaccines across the globe in other countries that are, um, that are in the later stages of their trials. So again, hopefully, if nothing now goes wrong in those trials, that would, that would be great. You know, if we've got vaccines from more than one supplier, that will really help. Um, as I said, in my opinion, but my opinion is based on what I've been reading and most of the health officials, um, if you look at um, the health officials in the States as well as the health officials in Europe and across the globe, they're saying that probably we won't have a readily available vaccine for people like us until well into next year. So, like I said, I'm hoping March, April, but that may not be what they mean by well into next year. They may be talking May, June, right? I don't know. No one knows. It's very, very concerning, right? That's part of the problem. That's why this is also stressful, is we can't see an end. Like, it would be okay if someone said, okay, March 1st, vaccine, right? I could go, okay. I can grit my teeth and get through too much, but, but we don't know. Okay. Um, we don't know yet. There's not enough data on these vaccines to know how much um, it's going to help with preventing uh, spread from people who are asymptomatic, so they're carriers, but they're not showing the symptoms, so they wouldn't have the vaccine. Maybe I don't know, right? It's um, We've got a lot to learn, but it would be nice just to get it out there safely so that at least the people in the hospitals and first responders and people like this are at more at less risk and are more safe than they have been up to this point. Okay.
So, bottom line right now, <laughs> for the foreseeable future, right, we have to wear our masks. We have to. Um, I've got a link, I haven't pulled it up to show you, but I've got it on the um, PowerPoint, which I'll load when we're done. Um, if you want to go and look at it, um, there's a link that's looking at how the, what they know about the masks right now and how they're working. So it, originally when we were asked to mask up, that was to prevent me making you sick, right? So if I've got the virus, the mask is going to prevent you from getting sick, right? I wasn't wearing a mask to stop me from getting sick, but now what they're seeing is that given the right kind of material, the mask can actually um, limit the amount of virus. And remember our, that idea of infectious load and viral load, right? So if I'm limiting the amount of virus that I'm receiving, then Possibly I either won't get sick or I won't get very sick, right? So really, really important. They're also looking at the types of material, and one of the things that the article said was silk, um, which I haven't tried a silk mask. I might go on eBay and see if I can find a silk mask. Um, I've got some others coming, uh, because I decided, having done all this reading, I've been wearing the same mask for a couple of days and then putting it in the wash. And now I've decided, having prepped this, that I want a clean mask every day. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not gonna take the risk. Um, especially, as I said, right now, Southeast New Mexico is a hot spot. So we're going bonkers here right now with COVID cases. Um, the US just hit 140,000 new cases in one day. Yesterday or the day before. Yesterday or the day before. 140,000 in one day. Right? And we're supposed to be controlling it. And we're not even close. Okay? And this is why. Because we're not masking, we're not social distancing, and we're not washing our hands enough. Right? Those are the only three things we have right now to protect ourselves. And everybody needs to be doing that. Right? Um, it could be that even when the vaccine is widely available, that we're going to get told by the health experts that we still should wear a mask for a while until the vaccine has kind of damped down the level of the virus that's out there. Right? I don't know. We'll see. Um, and interestingly, this is really a funny little piece of video for you. Um, soap works better than hand sanitizer at removing the coronavirus. So hand sanitizer is better than nothing, but it's much, much better to grab a bar of soap. Cheap soap, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, and really wash your hands with the soap because the soap disrupts the, the bond um, and so the virus kind of slips off your hands as you rinse your hands off. Right? And let me show you this. I found this on YouTube. It's very cute. Um, but it's a very um, it's a cool example of exactly what that statement is trying to tell us. Right, let me find this application. Uh, here we go. So this is um, at kindergarten maybe, or, or uh, first grade, um, possibly even preschool, but anyway, it it's shows exactly what's going on. So the plate has water and black pepper in it, and the black pepper represents the virus. Okay, so let's make it a bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so dip your finger inside the virus water. Okay, 
Did the virus move at all? Did any of the pepper flakes move? No. No, right? Okay. Now, Isa, take out your finger. Do you see any virus on your finger, any pepper on your finger? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, you don't want the virus on your finger, right, you guys? So, Isa, can I ask you to dip your finger in soap? Clean your finger. Okay? This is the importance of how we wash our hands. Now, Isa, does your finger have soap in it? Okay, now can you dip your finger back in the virus? Do you see that? You guys saw that? You see how important it is to wash our hands? <laughs> I love it. Love it. So, it's important to wash your hands, guys, so the black pepper isn't on your hands, okay? That's the important point. We don't want pepper on our hands. Okay, here I am. All right, we're back here. Okay, so um, then what I've done, I've put some links here for you um, in case you want to go and do some research of your own. <coughs> and also um, some of these, oh, one of those is wrong. Okay, I'll double check those before I post it. Um, these sites have updates regularly, all right? Um, that global one that I showed you on Wednesday updates every day. So it's um, a quick, easy way for you to stay on top of what's happening. And then, um, there's some info about uh, the CDC, how to get in touch with the CDC. And I just, on the note page here, I have another link that has nothing to do with this, but it's really important that you hear this piece of information because I did not know um, that this had happened. So. If you remember back into the summer, the um, federal government gave out a stimulus package and every single person, adult, I guess, was supposed to get a $1,200 check in their bank account, right? Free $1,200. Um, it turns out that many students and many low-income individuals who do not file taxes did not get their stimulus check, right? Because the stimulus check w was kind of rooted through your tax filing. And so when you file your taxes, they've got your bank details and all that stuff. And then, lo and behold, $1,200 just turned up in your bank account. Um, so the last day to file for this stimulus check, you're still entitled to that $1,200 if you didn't get it, okay? The last day to file for that is the 21st of November. Right? And I have put a link on the note page on this last slide. Let me show you what happened there. It was very off. Um, let me see if I can get to the PowerPoint. No, because I shut it. Oh, wow. Uh, can you see that slide, guys? Yes. Yes. Okay, down here is the link to the IRS to find out how to get that $1,200. 
okay? So if you didn't get it back in the summer, I think mine went into my account end of May, beginning of June, I don't remember to be honest. Right? If you did not get that money, you've got until the 21st to file and receive that $1,200. Okay? So, spread that around. <laughs> Anyone you know that may not have received it, all right? Or if you've got neighbors who you know kind of work cash in hand, and they're unlikely to have filed taxes, let them know, okay? Or your grandparents, anybody, right? Make sure that you all get your money, okay? All right, and that, my people, is all I have for you. Any questions about Corona or um, to my knowledge there has been no um, formal uh, declaration of uh, school being shut in January. Um, all I can tell you is that no one I know, <laughs> none of the faculty are planning on you being back in January. Um, we're all planning on having to do this again for another semester, unfortunately. Um, it'd be much nicer to have you back, but it's also important to keep everybody safe. So, um, if I was in your shoes, I would be banking on it being online, okay? Make sure if you've been having trouble this semester with your internet connection or anything like that, make sure to talk to student services um, because they're supposed to have some resources to help you guys with internet, um, you know, or talk to your provider and see why the internet has been patchy, see if they've got a way of fixing that for you, okay? Um, and yeah, just get yourselves ready and, and in a, a reasonable situation so that spring isn't quite as ghastly as the beginning of this semester was for you all. All right? Any questions? It's just out of curiosity, but I don't understand how if you didn't file taxes, how you can get the refund check or the, the stimulus check. Right. That's why you have to go to that website. So the the stimulus check was theoretically for everybody, right? Any adult, every adult was supposed to receive that stimulus check. But they didn't make the effort, <laughs> um, and, and in fairness, I'm not quite sure how you would make that effort, um, to, to find out who hadn't received it, really. Um, and so what they did was they just put it into the bank accounts that they knew. And what frustrates me is it's only, I mean, Brian and I heard about it this week. Um, and how come we didn't hear about this months ago that that money was still available for people, right? So we find out about it right at the end of the deadline. <laughs> so I, I really, I don't, I don't know all I'm so, what I would, if I was you and I hadn't got it, I would get on that link and find out what I am or am not do, right? Um, I, I don't think it was linked to being a taxpayer, is my understanding. Now, I'm not very politically minded, so I could be completely wrong about that, but my understanding is it didn't have anything to do with being a taxpayer. It was a stimulus package to try to get people 
over the hump, right? Or the hump's still going on, and you know some of you guys might need that money. So I would give it a go and see what happens. Worst case scenario, you don't get it. You're no worse off than you are now, <laughs> right? But it'd be pretty nice to have $1,200 in your bank account right before trying to have some sort of Christmas, right? <laughs>